recording again. Okay. Good morning, Jeremy. Um, good morning. How are you? I am going to jump into the Zoom meeting in a moment. Oh, I'm not going to let me in, is it? Um, You're already see, in. I did, I did drop your line at some point, but it'd be very helpful if you could send me one of the CSV files. Um, just so that I can see okay. um, what format you need. Okay. Okay, so this is, I probably have to start my video. Join my computer, share your screen, share my screen. Why does this, when it, uh, it can, like, after the JSON is converted, or the CSV is converted to a JSON, when I the button is download result, it's set, it's, uh, it's default to a text document. It's supposed to be a uh, JSON file. Yeah, that's an issue that you're having that I've not experienced that on a Mac, so I'm not quite sure what we're, why we're getting that. Um, so I can't, I'll have to look at that more carefully. Um, um, is, the, is the file format um, that you're working with, is it similar to the link that I've just posted, which is to a CSV file that has columns corresponding to yes. Um, fields? Yes. Um, okay, because uh, the, the, I did put together a tool a few a few months ago um, to help you do this. So I'll just, okay. um, the link is, the link is there. It's a node, it's a node.js tool, which, um, uh, which means that it's not for the faint hearted, but I think it'll be easier than <laughs> what I just saw. Yeah, it's not that it's, um, yeah, it's, I, I think I saw that, but the node.js tools aren't quite accessible, so. Um, we're still struggling a little bit with that. Um, okay, so here I'm going to ask you to jump out of the meeting. Um, Tyler, you're welcome to stay. Love to have you. And okay. Questions if you'd like. Um, and um, I'm on here. James, you're recording. I'm recording. And you should see. So I see two of you. Two of us, and that's all. I, yeah, so I don't actually need that desktop logged in anymore, right? Want well, me to kick, kick you out of that one? Yeah. So kick me out because you're the host. And Jeremy, we were going to talk about. Um, I've been sending Jeremy these emails about ten o'clock at night the night before. He's very good sport. Last the last night's was twelve hours, meaning we're going to talk in twelve hours, and. Um, what I want, what I suggested to him is I wanted to talk about this idea of making lists. Um, I had hoped in the previous workshop, but we're going to get to it in the next one, that we got to focus not on importing, but on the concept of what a list is. And um, to me, my work in the past couple of weeks in this class has led me to understand lists in a very different way. Um, could you just talk a little bit about what lists are? From, the, from your perspective, Jeremy, and, and, and then we'll see if that gets us to the conversation. I think it will. That gets us to the conversation I was hoping to have about the yeah, Sure. Um, so Steve and I have a, have a slight difference of opinion in um, the, in the kind of um, layering of things in, um, in our sort of analysis of my text at the moment. So um, some of what I'm about to say, I think, isn't quite the same way um, that Steve's visualizing it. Um, but uh, for a st for a, to start with, the reason why TiddlyWiki is concerned with lists at all is because classical wikis contain a couple of really important lists. Um, the first one is the list of recent changes. Um, so um, it's, it's something talked about before, but in classical wikis, one of the key features is the ability to go to a particular page, to a particular page, and see a reverse chronological list of changes. And um, in many situations, if the volume of changes is low enough, 
then it's practical for the people who are using the wiki to kind of review that and have a sense of where the activity is by reviewing the recent changes list. And then there's another feature um, that we call backlinks, which is most wikis give you the ability when you're looking at a particular page to see which pages link to that page. And that is also a list because it can in general be more than one item. And so those are two features of classical wikis that when you think about their implementation, they're concerned with a sequence of multiple pages or you know, um, for us tiddlers, but a, but a sequence of pages. So in order for TiddlyWiki to be able to offer the classical wiki features out of the box, it needs support for lists. Now, most wikis don't make lists and any sense of support of lists be a primary feature. There's typically, there's some little piece of magic, a magic incantation that'll give you a um, list of recent changes and a slightly different incantation that'll give you a list of all of the tiddlers that link to this one. Okay, so, so just so I get it, so your thinking is that in the classical wiki world, that every list was sort of its own command. The, um, in the classical wiki world, lists are an implicit feature. Okay. It is typically not, so they're there. You, you see lists when you interact with a wiki in the user interface, but lists aren't exposed as a primary um, uh, com, um, com model of the user interface. So to translate that to our language in this class, maybe you see lists, you read lists, but you don't write them. Um, no, you do. You, so there's a full set of abilities around lists in TiddlyWiki. No, and, and, and TiddlyWiki's, um, I was going to say that, that, that TiddlyWiki's um, uh, innovation here is that it has an algebra for lists, a slightly quirky and unusual algebra for lists, um, because it's designed to be easy to type and easy to read rather than you know, the normal um, normal concerns when people design an algebra. So it's probably a bit unfair to call it an algebra. But we've got a set of features that are concerned with lists. Those features evolved in order to support the uh, those places where lists form part of the fundamental user interface of wiki. So you, so, you keep saying user interface, and hmm. I'm trying to get... It, to me, lists are part of the interface that the writer uses to create content for his or her reading. Yes, I think that's true for us. So um, yes. one of the, in, in classical wikis, as I say, lists are an, an implicit feature. So they, they're, they're part of the UI and they're part of the writing. So you can also write a list of wiki links in a conventional wiki, but it's normally by typing the entries of the list. What's novel f um, uh, about TiddlyWiki is this ability to, to write an expression that describes a list and then from that get rendered a, a list. And so we've got both lists that you type, which in a, from a computery way, we'd call those a, a static list perhaps, and dynamic lists where the entries in the list are the result of you know, running a little program, if you like, um, that, okay. that, that specifies the, the items in the list. Okay, so Kira, do you see that as like a big thing? Or are you not seeing that as like a something to hold on to? Or Tyler, do you see that like that? Do you get what Jeremy's talking about? The idea that you can, you can write some code and generate a list of something that's special and distinctive in writing? Um, I mean, I understand it to where, like, I know what he's talking about, but I don't really, like, I never really understood what lists were in the first place because I'm not very good at well, HTML. Let's, we, I, I've, I've come to explaining it from, from a point of view that, that's, that's, that's probably very, <laughs> it's very typical given my perspective. I was talking about the motivation in building the feature like that. So it's very much um, that, oh. that explanation, I think, rather... Um, it's probably the least helpful for people learning because it's it, it's really laying out for you the logic from the point of view of sort of constructing TiddlyWiki. When we experience TiddlyWiki, um, I think you're, um, uh, as Steve said, um, the dominant experience of lists in TiddlyWiki is actually 
of um, uh, capabilities and characteristics and benefits of this that I hadn't even really thought through myself when, <laughs> when they were first implemented um, uh, to that description. But the, what, but led you, what led you to think that it made sense in a wiki to be able to construct lists algebraically well, that, this is what's quite, I, I guess, uh, um, yes, an, an interesting question, that, that um, what I did in building TiddlyWiki was a very standard sort of computery desire to break things down. And the, um, the driver was this idea that you should be able to build the entire visible user interface of TiddlyWiki using Wikitext features. Mm -hmm. So that meant, that immediately presented the question, okay, how do I do recent changes? And then in trying to um, address how you let users create recent changes as a user interface, we've got two approaches actually. TiddlyWiki Classic literally had a magic incantation that said, give me a timeline. And you could customize it a bit, but it was basically magic. Whereas TiddlyWiki Classic, I'm sorry, TiddlyWiki 5, um, the stock recent changes list, um, which is the place where you see a date and then a list of the tiddlers that were modified on that date and then you know, down to the next date. Um, that list is, is constructed from wiki text primitives. And in fact, it's two internestled lists. There's the list of tiddlers and then the list of days. You know, so we've got multiple tiddlers in each day. Um, mm -hmm. Again, fingers is an excellent yes, yes, yes. <laughs> illustration. So that, that the recent changes list ends up being a great example, actually, of a very complicated list. Um, that in order to in order to provide that specific feature of breaking things up by day, um, that implies some capabilities of the list processing approach, you know, because you need to be able to do, you need a certain level of flexibility to put together things like that. So, so that's from the perspective of constructing TiddlyWiki. Um, the, some of the stuff that we've talked about on earlier sessions about how lists relate to the process of writing and the benefits of being able to use list generation as part of writing. I think all of that has really been part of the um, part of what we've learned in the journey through TiddlyWiki 5. Um, so in TiddlyWiki, we've always had this idea that you cut your content up into small chunks and then you tie them back together into, um, uh, in, into threads, into sequences. And in TiddlyWiki Classic, that was very implicit. In TiddlyWiki 5, we've now got this far more explicit model of various different ways, in fact, that you can thread these chunks back together, all based on the same primitive operations for dealing with lists. And so what, it's, what it enables you to do in, in TiddlyWiki is to write your stuff, to put enough um, tags and so on, enough um, structuring around it, that you can then, as almost a separate activity, explore it by creating and reviewing lists. So you might, for instance, we've talked before about um, manually making links between items and how sometimes in the linking process in a wiki, we create a link to things before they exist. Um, and that, that can be very useful then as a sort of, um, as a uh, note to self to go back and to fill something in. And so a great example of a, a sort of dynamic um, uh, list process that could be part of the writing process might be if I sit down to review all of the missing links in my wiki. Um, and so I might see 100 missing links um, in the missing links tab. And so I might refine my own checks that says, okay, show me all the link, missing links where the originating tiddler isn't tagged note, for instance. So to apply some logic like that to kind of slice and dice the tiddlers and then operate on the ones that I've identified. So I see that sort of operationally for those purposes, but I want to suggest that the ability to make rhythms operationally for writing as well. Um, I'm going to... Yeah. Well, there's an excellent example of that, I think, if you, um, on any TiddlyWiki... Uh, the contents, table of contents, which this wiki doesn't have a table of contents. No. Um, 
but that's a, a, um, a great example of threading together items into lists. Um, and those lists are, are basically used as a visualization to, to allow you to navigate the content. But, um, but go on and show us, yeah. So what this has is a, um, is this, and this is the one that we we're just working with that we we're just about to import, okay? So what this has is a series of tagged objects, um, I think 150 of them, 180, whatever. Um, and each object is tagged with a theme at home. Um, yeah. I can't remember the other themes at home as part of a celebration and during a ritual. It's tagged with an activity, either um, dancing, eating, playing, or singing. And it's tagged with an ethnicity, one of five ethnicities. And of course, all the objects are tagged with tagged objects, so you can get to all of them. Okay. So I put pictures in just because I could. But they have nothing to do with the tags. They're totally random. <laughs> and then we run it template and, and so before we get there i want to go to this advanced search feature um, and type on filter because this i think is something that a lot of people might miss so here's where we might build a list right and, and you call it a filter expression but i'm trying to figure out why this why this is any different than a list so here's a list of all my tiddlers that are tagged hindu well is in in, in computery terms the list is the list that is generated from the expression. This is the list, this is the expression. Mm. Okay, so this is not a list. So when I so think- We often treat it as if it, as if it was. Um, and, it's, and again, it's, it's, it's probably the, the sort of, the distinction between the kind of um, conceptual map that I need to have to build TiddlyWiki, which I think slightly differs from that you need to use it. So there's a, no, a number of sort of those finer distinctions between an expression and a list, just to say. And if you, you may also remember, Steve, that um, a list, if, if you literally just explicitly put, um, in fact, if you drag a link like tagged object 100 and you put it to the, drag that to the, yes, to the text box, you can see how you'd have to manually put the spaces in, but you can now, you can create a list um, uh, just by listing the items. Um, okay, see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You've got your. You've lost a. Yeah. So a um, a filter expression, a degenerate case of a filter expression is a list, um, and uh, filter operators allow us to create dynamic elements. So by here, we've got all tag. The, the, what, the letters T-A-G are what it technically we'd call a filter operator. So okay. it's, it's a little piece of canned magic. Um, so in the case of tag, it says, give me all the tiddlers um, that, are, that carry the following tag. And in this case, that are, and, uh, and not only give me the list of tiddlers, but sort them by their value on the field. Tiddler. Yes. So that then that actually is probably a good good enough um, point to to go back and define what a list is. So a list technically is a sequence of tiddler titles. So the items in a list don't actually have to exist as tiddlers, um, but they do have to be valid tiddler titles. Um, and uh, by sequence, we mean that it's an ordered list. So if you've got um, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Uh, you're not only specifying those three names, you are also specifying the order in which they appear. Right. So, and so that's, that, that to me is important because that really gets us to the next concept for next, this week, next week, whatever, about sequentiality. Because to me, the idea of writing in hypertext, I, and this is, this is a philosophical question, I think, because Ted Nelson calls hypertext non-sequential writing. And I think he means that you write in a sequence that's different than you might anticipate your readers reading. Or you write in a, you write differently, but I don't think hypertext supports non-sequential reading because I think 
that doesn't exist. So that's why I've taken the column as a multi-sequential narrative. You can move through these wikis in any number of predefined sequences or create your own sequence, but you can't move through them non-sequentially because that doesn't, there is no non-sequence. Yeah. The next button. By definition, you, your, your experience of thing, you experience things one after the other, that's a sequence. Yes, I think. And when you write and you create, there's always a next button for you. There's always something for your reader to do that's always next and previous. So there's that implicit next and previous or as we see here, before and after is built in. And that, that's, that was um, news to me. That was, that was a discovery for me to, to understand that. So back to my tagged object 1060 and now looking at the, everything below this line, by the way, comes from the template. Okay, so those we've been talking about templates through the weeks and the exercises we can use templates and I'm going to advance templating as a verb as perhaps as important as linking, tagging, transclusion. <laughs> linking, tagging, tagging, transcluding, templating. Maybe it's my fourth thing, we'll see, right? But what this does is this template provides navigation from this tiddler to those previous and after. I'm sorry, those before and after this tiddler in the list. So you've got to have this notion in your mind now of a list of all the tiddlers tagged with Hindu. This tiddler is called, um, where's the caption? Um, this tiddler right here. This tiddler shows the Hindu dance at home. The one. So, the one before this in a list of. Hmm? That's, that's yeah, yeah. The one before this in the list of Hindu tiddlers mm -hmm. is the tiddler singing during a ritual. The one after it is a Hindu playing as part of a celebration. So you can navigate this tiddler through the Hindu story, or through the dancing story, or through the at home story. And there's probably a way simpler way to do this that you probably mm -hmm. just type, you know navigate and Jeremy's going to tell me the magic word that he's already invented for this but I was quite no I don't know but that's the um I, this, no this is really nicely a uh, really nice illustration I think um the, and the I mean just show people um what happens when you click on one of those links I mean to go, go to the next one and then navigate back to the previous one um I think it's um well, like, what, what, the next link that what you're showing here, but I, but I think we're not necessarily visualizing in a clear way, is this idea that each tag um, uh, specifies a sequence of tiddlers. So for those tiddlers that have that tag, we can show where, we can visualize where they are in that sequence by displaying the next and previous items and making them link. So you can kind of move along that sequence by following links. So it's, it's as if you multiple sequences. Absolutely, yes. And we yeah. can see this, idea, this critical idea that be, by chopping information up into small chunks, uh, um, one of the benefits is that it then becomes meaningful to tie them together in multiple sequences um, uh, because it's you know, an ind a single concept or a single thing you can apply separate tags to, you know, that, uh, each, all of which apply to it. And somehow, the, and, and um, Karen's work, and, and so, well, okay, so let me back off a little bit. There's, to me, there's two applications for this kind of logic. One might be in Karen's case, um, and Karen, I, I, I mentioned, you, you saw her work earlier last, last week, Jeremy, and she's the... She's and she did the goat thing. Yeah. Um, she's starting with a set of photographs or images. That go that are going to get tagged, and they're going to get tagged with um, um, the same dimensions. Um, nope, that doesn't work either. They're going to get tagged with an activity, a location, or whatever. The three characteristics each picture is going to get tagged. Let me get back to one of them. So. I just jumped the gun and randomly assigned tags to her picture so that I could demo my thing. So they, they, they're meaningless, but she's going to have her, her participants or her herself tag each of them 
and as they tag them, the narrative will be constructed. The alternative is to start with your tags and find, say, images to illustrate those tags. So in Kira's case, she knows that she needs to have a picture of a rose, leaves that are green. So she has to go find that image or that, that object, something that, so she starts with a set of tagged objects that are empty, and she has to fill them. She has to embed things perhaps in them. So, the, so in one, you start with all of your objects and you pour content into them. In the other, you start with all of your images and you build tags around them. You end up in the same place, I think, but there are totally different ways of getting to non-sequential narratives, or sorry, to multi-sequential narratives, um, which I think is- that you're doing here is that you're using tags um, to, the, the tags are like dimensions. Um, yes. That's what, uh, mentioned. That's what I was looking for. We can, we can move along those dimensions. I think something that becomes very interesting from a writing perspective is when one or more of those dimensions corresponds to time. Yes. So, um, uh, and and it, we, we could think about this more obviously if we say had um, each of these items represented an event, um, an, ev an event in history, and then we could use tags for things um, like science, religion, war, <laughs> um, et cetera. Um, and then um, we'd be able to see these threads of history and how they um, interwove through each other. And um, uh, an analysis of those dimensions might lead us to be thinking about cause and effect, which takes us back to your word, um, to consequence, which takes us back to sequence again. Yeah, so, so I, think, I think this is, this is um, a very productive way to explore designing and writing interactive texts. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to use the same framework, this framework that I, I'll distribute to class. It's linked in the Design Write just under today's workshop title, but I'll distribute this wiki. It's got some instructions, but then you can construct a multi-sequential narrative in one of two ways. You can start, and if you're gonna, I like images because it really helps people sort of crystallize their thinking. You can start with a set of images and tag them, or you can start with a set of tags and find images to match them. Or you can do both simultaneously. And, and, and I think here I can see the wheel spinning. She's saying, well, I'm sort of halfway in between both. Yeah, yeah which is perfect. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I had a question for you, Jeremy, that might help me. In, um, and I wrote this, so it's not springing you on a cold, but in the old, um, Tiddly Wiki Classic, the MPTW, which years and years ago stood for Monkey Pirate Tiddly Wiki, had this concept where you could clearly show what tiddlers are, you, you could show tiddlers in a hierarchy. So in this case, we've got um, um, ethnicity, okay? So ethnicity is a one of my dimensions. But how can I show here the things that are tagged to ethnicity. So if I, this should show yeah, me click the X. No, click the X out of where you were so that you're not editing the tiddler. Um, click the arrow on ethnicity. Um, click info. Um, and we've got tagging. Um, so um, the, it, it, it's a bit hidden in Tiddlywiki, because we have to click to get there, but you can make it a little bit easier. Go to the Tools tab on the left there. If you go to the Tools tab, you can, sorry, the Tools tab under Ethnicity. So immediately, oh, we'll click Info again. Um, and um, then select the Tools tab there, and then click the checkbox next to the Info button. Um, and um, so now, at least it makes it one click to get to Right. But, but I think one of the things that you're doing here is um, is customizing the user interface to surface that information um, so that you can see it without having to click to get it, which I think is useful in a number of situations. Yeah, but what I and I've lost my ethnicity. Here we go. Um, so the to list the. Tiddlers that are tagged with this is the standard list, right? So to list the tiddlers that are tagged with, and I don't know why tagly is not working, but um, yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay, I get that. But the yeah. alternative is to, um, is to, as I think you have also done here, to create a view template segment so yep. that the list is always displayed. Yeah, so okay. how do I get dimension? How do I show the tiddlers that tag this tiddler at this level? Um, it's, um, you'd use, um, do another, uh, copy and paste the list links macro invocation that you've got there, and then we'll okay. modify it to create, um, like uh, maybe, advanced search, right? Uh, you can, you can use, I mean, the, um, you can, were well, you were going to use, uh, use that as a, as a scratch pad. Yeah. Um, yeah the, the way that you would, um, do it is. Oh, have you not got anything tagged that I mentioned? Okay. That's not quite it. It's close to that. No, no. You you want to find the things that you want to find the current tags. Um, uh, so I think it's just tags. So um, get uh, exactly. Uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> I'm not, not that I'm giving you a good demonstration for how difficult no, this is. I sprung um, this we, um, uh, better is to do, ethn um, Steve, it's, yes, now put, um, uh, uh, yes, tags, and then open square brackets, close square brackets. But now, Exactly, okay. and maybe we've got an HR in the middle of something. Yeah. Um, but the um, what you've done here needs to be retyped for each tiddler that carries well, the tag. Down. That, but that's why I wanted to show it in code. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can. I, I, yeah. So there's no standard command that it's it's this it's this tags command. That's the one I was missing. Okay, and, and it's you get mind bending. Tagly tagging the name of this of the we're talking about um, a feature that was originally called tagly tagging because of the mind bending complexity of the way that we use the word tag. Um, so we talk about the tags of this tiddler. This tiddler is tagging the other tiddler. Um, what is uh, uh, give me information about this tag? So there's three at least three words that begin with the letters T-A-G, um, but mean something subtly different. And by using enough of those words in the same sentence, you pretty much guarantee that um, yeah, so uh, you lose all meaning. <laughs> so this will should work, right? Yeah, I must say, I would write it, um, there's, um, I'd write it as angle brackets, current tiddler with a capital T. Um, because I think that's clearer. Um, only a single angle bracket, but. Um... Exactly that. Almost. Uh... It probably needs to be um, this. No, it shouldn't. No, no, you, you, no. Um, hang on. Why is that? Okay. And I'm just doing a test on mine. Yeah, okay. But um, <coughs> works well enough for our purposes here. I'm just going to keep, there it is. Okay. Um, so that concept of tagging and tag is the one I wanted to leave this workshop at. Make sure everybody left with that understanding of the difference between tagging and tagging. If you look at the critiques that I wrote in Design Ray, um, and I posted them last night. Um, this gets me to hierarchical tagging and understanding when to tag, where to tag in the hierarchy. And some students are beginning to tag, and Jeremy, maybe you can explain this as a logical way, like, um, um, oh, I don't have Jessica's, um, so some students are tagging sort of down. So that they've got, like, to me, it's inverted. 
they've got lots of tags down and fewer tags up. So I like to tag like dimensions, and then there's several dimensions, um, ethnicity, activity, and theme. And then under ethnicity, there's lots of eth different ethnic groups. Some people are starting with Hindu and tagging it to ethnicity. And then they tag ethnicity down. And to me, that it doesn't work. Am I missing something, or is there another whole logic there? Um, I think that um, this is what I would hope to see. Um, almost the hallmark that these primitives genuinely are primitives um, is um, the diverse ways in which they can be put together and this sort of repeated feeling that you can build sort of equal and opposite structures by using the same components in different combinations. So it's a very, it's a very sort of soft way of describing it, but it's something about what it feels you encounter a mechanism that has this quality of being very general by being a small number of primitive capabilities that can be combined together in a consistent way. Um, which again, is sort of, the, you know, my techie word talking about it as an algebra is kind of a proof that the algebra is powerful and neutral, that it can be used to express radically different philosophies of how you use these primitives you know, to, to support the writing process. So here's, here's got another great example here. Um, okay. Jessica's. Um, Excellent. I see what you mean about the tagging direction. Yeah, so she's got, these are very similar sets of things tagged to the American Hockey League and to the Utica Commons. And I am trying to understand, and I feel like I'm not open-minded enough to understand the beauty and logic of this. I suspect it's there, but I'm not seeing it. But clearly, it makes sense at some level, but I'm, not, I'm trying to figure out how you would use this kind of structure. So I suggest, I ask Jessica to sort of... One of the things that I, that, that I, would, I like is the idea that all of the structure that we apply to stuff is in some sense provisional, that through the process of applying and reviewing structure, we end up changing the basis of that structuring itself. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I'd quite like is the idea that one could misstructure things, but then still use that misstructure to sort of reverse out of it. So here um, we've got tags, Clinton comets and Utica comets. And I don't think this would be quite sensible, but you could conceive of um, splitting those up. So we've got a, um, uh, something about comets and something about Clinton versus Utica. And one would hope that one could do some kind of search and replace. So being able to say, Oh, I messed this up. So everything that's got both Clinton comets and Utica comets, right. so give that the tag such and such. Anything with just one, give it this tag. And then you've got a kind of, if you, if you had a reliable, easy to understand way of doing that, that allowed you to sort of make mistakes, review the changes and so on, um, then yes, um, that seems like a powerful, you know, the, the downside of structuring is, um, that structure also implies a sort of making concrete. Um, so the more things are structured, you might think of them as being hard to change. Um, hard to, you know, the more work is invested in applying structure to things, the more work is implied in changing it again. So yes, you're doing a great example here of a kind of bulk operation. Yeah, so, so this notion of renaming tags is important and just to um, show you what I did is I went and found, and how you know this, I'm not sure, but I found this tiddler that I know does rename tags and I can just drag it right into the into the tab bar and drop it in and it comes in and of course it's already come in before so we've got that. Um, so this is, and I think in the last workshop which we've recorded, I'm not sure we've shared that video, it's shared live, we'll get better at it, but here I was looking at Jessica and said, I just don't get it, I don't get it, I don't understand it, but then I thought more about it and I'm trying to understand. And, and, and it really is, I think, the difference between tagging. Um, but what do you think that you're learning about 
each other by reviewing the different approaches that you've taken to tagging. Does it, can you infer anything about it? Is it, is it just a random result of the different way you've been experiencing and exploring the software? Or does it or could it represent a different way of thinking about the, you know, the, the, the world, I guess? Well, I think it's definitely the latter. Um, it represents a different way of thinking about the world and a different way of understanding how these, in Jessica's case, it represents a different way of understanding how these things are related to each other. So do you think outside the realm of Tiddlywiki, you could find with Jessica specific other cases where you, um, you were taking a different approach to doing things that you could attribute to the same, um, to the same difference in mental approach? Jessica, sorry, hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was distracted for a moment. Would you repeat that? If you well, could. it was just really this thought about so let, let me come at it from a distance, if I may. I was fascinated to once be, um, meet somebody who is a professional indexer. Um, and what I learned from them is that the task of creating a traditional index at the back of a book um, is a task that the author of the book is unqualified to do. And the indexer said that you can tell when somebody has indexed their own book and it's laughable and terrible. Um, because they don't see correctly um, how to index it. And that, I love that idea that um, the, of all of the importance of the author's perspective, that it actually the closeness, presumably, to the material precludes them from performing this certain task, or at least performing this certain task in the traditional way. Um, and so anyway, that led to um, an exploration where I discovered that you can actually... Um, people who are indexers can tell a lot about the person who compiled an index by looking at the index. And they would say that they, without putting words into a profession that I've only met probably one person from, um, they would say, say that they can uh, observe um, uh, personality traits there. And so the idea that you know, applying tags is, I think, very analogous to compiling an index. And so I would absolutely expect that the way that all of us apply tags is a, some deep marker for our personality types. So I, okay, my, my instinct then of being unduly, uh, not critical, but um, not understanding this approach, I think was right. <laughs> I don't, um, but it doesn't mean it, it doesn't make it wrong in any way. It just makes it different. And why I think what's, what I'm most fascinated by is this, these, these differences. Those the yeah. And, and I mean, I think you could, I could imagine somebody using a scheme that was wrong and they, in a particular case of wrongness that would set my spidey sense tingling um, was if it was, um, uh, if it, there was superfluous information, um, if they're going to superfluous work, to convey the same information. So redundant tags, for instance. So a bunch of tags that have been separately set up, but actually um, apply to exactly the same tiddlers. Um, so, you know, say if they decided to deal with the problem of aliasing, so the fact that they wanted a tag called sunshine as well as one called weather, you know, by making them. So that, I, I think you do, oddly, um, we, we've, we've, we've created a world with rules um, that include, you know, there's, there is some sense of um, uh, arrangements of things that make no sense. Um, you can build something that's, uh, that is, in that sense, wrong. And is that um, sometimes a factor when things are tagged to themselves? No, that seems um, a fair enough and useful thing sometimes. But this, what you're showing me here, where we've got the same tiddler existing in camel case and with spaces in, that feels wrong. That feels like we've got, um, it feels like there's a chance that we've got two tiddlers, um, uh, two independent tiddlers that mean the same thing. And that yeah, feels wrong. And how about the idea of tiddlers tagging each other? Um, I think that that 
when we think about relationships, so, you know, um, two people use the tag love to indicate they love each other, then yeah, that kind of makes sense. So I, I, so we imagine a tiddler of people where we tag, sorry, a, t- a tiddly wiki full of tiddlers representing people and we tag each tiddler with the names of the people who love that person. And you know, presumably that's a bilateral <laughs> relationship in some of the cases and conceivably not in other of the cases. So tiddlers tagging each other makes sense too. Good. Can do, can do. But, you can, but, a, but, but one could certainly see in the context of a table of contents, for instance, which is a sort of higher level structure that we build out of tags, um, then um, there's a class of errors which set up loops. And that, again, would feel like a misapplication of the technique if you encountered it. But the world, you know, the, the, these infractions, they're infractions of our sort of human conventions. They're not logical inconsistencies that cause the world to melt. I think, is the TSA expandable? No, it's, um, oh wait, I'm close. I think this will illustrate your... Oh yes, you got missing one of those. I think yes. I think this. By the way, I, I realised why the current tiddler thing we did earlier wasn't working. It was because you were doing it in the preview pane, and so in the preview pane, the current tiddler is the draft, right? Of course. Um, which is one of those hideous gotchas that I hate, but yeah. um, uh, shows how yeah yeah it's uh, the 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 drafts the features of TiddlyWiki concerned with draft um, are there to give an important part of the user experience. They allow you to make changes to a tiddler and then reverse out without, um, you know, without enacting those changes. Um, but their existence does create lots of funny little gotchas. Yeah, so when you, because it's referring to itself, yes, okay. So I think here, um, yes. So that's, this is what's gonna cause a hang. Yeah, you could easily crash the browser depending on. Yes. And I think that when things show up lower down in the table of contents, we get the opportunity to crash our browsers. Um, yeah, which I think is a tiddly wiki bug. It shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be possible to crash the browser. Yeah, I, I agree. But okay, so this, but this, this notion of table of contents, so American Hockey League shows up in several elements, well, that makes sense. And so I guess here what we're seeing is redundancy. So um, it's because the redundancy is in our cognitive space. We've got two tiddlers that have the same meaning, um, but, they, but that doesn't create any problems um, within TiddlyWiki because the inconsistency is a cognitive one and not, a, um, you know, not something like a loop, for instance. So um, a loop would be something that would concern us and concern TiddlyWiki. It would to try to detect that loop. Okay, well, thanks. Um, that was, let me see if I, did I cover all of my uh, topics? I'm gonna come back to my email, um, which is in some browser somewhere, somehow. Uh, okay. I have your email open in front of me. Yes, and, um, and I think um, we talked about sorts and filter operators. That was the last piece I wanted to talk about because and this we touched on it briefly because um, we labeled that uh, magic word tag um, as being a filter operator. Um, and so you go, great, this is the full list of them. So this is important for some folks when they really want to get there. Um, I haven't figured out how backlinks work yet, but I will someday. Um, they're, just, um, uh, they're just the um, tiddlers that link to this one. Oh, okay. So that's what I was looking, yeah, it's, that's how you, yeah, I just haven't figured out where you put it in the filter. That's very cool. Okay. Um, and the nice thing about this is, although when I do this, I get very frustrated because I want there to be code there that I can copy and paste, but I'm learning to live with that. Um, you can. I can okay. copy this. Uh but I want there to be code there that will do that. Right, 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 yeah. But that's okay, I'm learning to live with that. Um, so I've got this list of a, 
and I can push that in another container like Bliss Links as a macro. So you can put any filter in there. Um, and then these, what I really like, especially these order operators, and these were new to me very recently because I was asking in the Tidly Wiki group, which you are all who get interested in this are welcome to read. And Eric Schulman, I think, responded, well, you just use this command, it's right there. He didn't say it in any kind of snarky way. I just responded. He was very helpful and said, here, use this. And it's great. Um, so you've got this concept of before and after. Um, and I'm going to leave you with one question. Why did you use before and after differently than next and previous? Um, I think because... Well, we should probably just be grateful that I used one or the other in a reasonably consistent way. <laughs> okay, fair enough. As far as I understand it, next and previous operate on a field called list, the list field of the tiddler. Yes, that's right. Just navigate through that list field, which... Yeah. And the next and previous are relative, aren't they? They... Um, uh, uh, before and after. Yeah. The difference is that before and after operates on a list of tiddlers that are tagged or something and next and previous do something or very limited to just the list field of a tiddler. Is that about right? They, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I think, yes, you, I mean, you're correctly describing the distinction, but I think it is very problematic um, that we've got two operators that could have each other's name. So it, it ends up being one of those sort of arbitrary things, gravity being 9.81 or whatever it is. Um, and it's, it's troubling. But I think one of the issues here is we, well, you can see the problem that, that all these things are described by words. And yet, um, in almost every case, these filter operators are incredibly easy to visualize, um, but rather clumsy to describe in words. So both the descriptions and the names themselves are a little bit clumsy. You have to parse the descriptions really carefully. So it's the area where TiddlyWiki is most like a programming language. Those are characteristics of programming languages. You know? um, oh, as a po yeah, okay, thank that, that helps a lot. Um, and for us, again, this is not a class in programming, although we skirt right up to that edge. Um, so for the mortals among us who typically don't want to write code or don't know how, sometimes... Yeah, no, this is not code. This is just I, that it gets close to the same, you experience something of the same, um, of the same sense as when you're looking at code. Right, and, and, and I guess my point here is for everyone who's sort of struggling, struggling with that in this class, is there are times when you're going to have to just know the difference between the word next and after. Absolutely. There's some of this stuff that you need to learn by rote. There's and no difference in the logic. It's just they're applied differently. Yeah. Um, and I think there's also, when you get to complex realms of TiddlyWiki, as we are now, um, it's also worth remembering that TiddlyWiki was conceived of and built to be used in a community. So the thing that I noticed, the thing that happened to TiddlyWiki Classic was that a community built around it. And one of the things that I found observing that community was the way that people helped each other. So an apparently scary characteristic of TiddlyWiki, which is this great open-ended flexibility, it becomes, it's sort of okay, because in the context of the community, um, anybody who needs to can get guided through that complexity, either by engaging in a discussion with the community, or more importantly, doing the um, copying that which they see other people in the community doing. So this, uh, you get this idea where th this is as complex as language and idioms emerge and there's, there are common idioms that you see people repeating and copying from one another. So that, that I think, you know, it's as if we've got um, people, I don't know, repeating um, language that they don't necessarily understand, but um, if it accomplishes the correct, so, you know, you could have somebody in charge of a technical person saying, can you deconfobulate the left-hand fibrillator? And you can give that instruction um, without needing to understand it. And there's something in the same in TiddlyWiki. You can learn to give instructions to TiddlyWiki that you don't understand. 
I mean, many of us would then be driven to try and understand it. But. That, that to me, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm willing to play. And that's what I encourage everybody in this class to do is to just explore. Because I think in the process of exploring, you discover new ways of creating interactivity. Yes. Or that you discover that you can do it purposefully as opposed to you see it out there in the web and say, well, how did they do that? And now you force yourself into saying, oh, I see what they're doing. And that's really what we're trying to get to. So, Jeremy, thank you very much for joining in today. That was great. My pleasure. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, um, Much enjoyed it. And I'll look forward to catching you next week. Okay, great. Thanks. Cheers, then. Bye. Um, So, James, we can stop recording. Take a break.